So we're back. Uh, man, what is this? Episode 12, I believe. Rabbit Season Podcast. We're back in full effect. Um, you know, real life shit kicks in. got to handle business, and we just get back to it. Um, but, yeah, we're here. This is another interview I've been wanting to do. Uh, the homie, we go way back. Um, bro, like, a lot of years. I don't know exactly, but close to the amount of years we've been doing B-Side. So probably at least 10, maybe yeah. somewhere around there. Sounds and, uh this dude's promoted some of the dopest shows I've been to, some of the dopest shows I've got to host, which we'll get into later because uh, there's a couple on my favorite list mm-hmm. of Out the House Productions. But this is my brother Droops right here, and for that, we got to go. There we go. <laughs> What's up, man? How you doing? Oh, just right here, dog, in the place to be. You know, it's good to good to be out. You know, good yeah. to be back. Good good to see you guys back. You know, yeah, yeah. I know you guys are still a little active. I think during uh, COVID or whatnot. Yeah. Uh, Welcome back to the studio. It's been a while. Yeah, but I was just yeah back to the studio, and honestly, it feels good to, for Rush to be back because you know, yeah. Shit, I had to transition while. Uh, <laughs> that's that's while something. The, that's something. You know, we're, we're definitely gonna get into, but. Mm-hmm. First, formally, though, I did want to say uh, congrats on everything, you know, before that, during that, whatever, man, the, the, yeah. the family uh, getting married, tying the knot, man, all that shit. <laughs> if I did, I'm, I'm sure I told you at some point, but formally yeah. here on the show, no I'd like to say uh, congrats to you on that, bro, because yeah, that's uh, big bro. steps, Thanks. man. Yeah, yeah, it seemed like it all just happened, like, all at once, just about, too. <laughs> well, you know what? It That's what happens when sometimes the r- the person's the right one, you know? It's, yeah. Things go a little quicker, you know? No, nah, that's real talk. That's real talk. So, so uh, you know, during all that time, and we'll, we'll, we'll start there a little bit because we're going to go back and forth here and we bounce around. But yeah. um, uh, during that time, man, that was when things were still opened up. And like you said, all these things happen, and you got uh, the kids and everything, man. Yeah, uh, yeah Doug. So uh, uh, explain a little bit as uh, someone doing what you do, promoting and having to be out and handle phone calls and all that, what the transition's been like first, um, you know, family. Yeah, it, it was. Family style. Well, it, it was a quite a transition, like, from the jump. Like, well, I would say as soon as I got married, because, you know, I got married, first of all, you know, to my wife, Janet. Uh, big ups, she's listening. Yeah, yeah. Uh, big ups to you for like, handling what he does. Cause yeah, for dealing with my shit yeah, throughout yeah. the years. Shit. Yeah. Um, but yeah, um, you know, it was one thing, you know, to get married, and that was like probably roughly about three, four years ago, just about. And then to, for like a year or two later, to have, to have the baby, mm-hmm. you know, and then, um, you know, right after we had the baby, it, you know, it was starting to get busy. It, it honestly like because there was like a little downtime probably at our like 13 year mark okay where it just like slow down a little bit just because some politics and things that were happening behind the scenes that i had no control over yeah um which happens a lot which happens a lot to us too uh, yeah just to everybody you know that's the industry for you yeah um but um it, it, it was starting to pick back up it was about to be like our our busiest year like ever probably like we had like what was wouldn't it happen like in March? I think when everything shut down. Pretty much. Yeah. Yeah. So so like uh, Officially, like yeah. like the last show that I remember that we did, um, and I might be wrong. There might be like another other another one that I did here and there, uh, but it was the Griselda uh, show, and that was at nice. the Novo, um, and it was popping. It was dope. But we had like so many shows like booked for April and May, like we were gonna like step it up like a notch like crazy. And then, and then it happened. You know what I mean? Um, you know, it's it's weird. It was weird for me more than anything because I, I was used I was used to doing shows like every month, every year, like for the last fourteen years. At that time, yeah, so that was at our fourteen year mark. So I was like, and I want to say I've been to probably about forty five percent of them. Like hey, <laughs> you've thrown a lot of shows, but I've been to a lot of your shows too. Dog. Yeah, yeah, like yeah. not just as a host or whatever. I've been in the crowds, all that. For shit. sure, for yeah, sure. Yeah. I remember. I remember. Yeah. <laughs> what yeah. was your first reaction to like when the when the news really started coming out that damn we're, we can't go out, we got to close everything up? What was your first? Was, was it you know? Do you think it was all like bullshit, or did you just kind of like were you worried, or or what was your take? I wasn't, I wasn't necessarily worried, but I, I was like a little like, like fuck. Okay, here we go. How long is this gonna last? Because, you know, I, I'm not, I'm not saying this is bullshit, COVID or none of that. But um, 
I, you know, I, I've always been a person, like, ever since I was a teenager, like, against the government. Mm-hmm. Always been, again, like, I, like politics. And yeah. I knew there was, like, a lot of bullshit, a lot of uh, lies on the skeptical. news. Skeptical. Yeah. Hey, where I, we come from, that's all we can be is skeptical yeah. of some of this shit that goes but, on. But huh? at the same time, I wasn't trying to be ignorant to the fact. Yeah, you know I what got mean? you. So I was like, okay, this is happening. They're going to shut it down. How long is it going to last? Yeah. I'm like, all right. So uh, all I could do was really just wait it out. You know, I, I waited it out for like about a month or two. Uh, luckily, I had a little cushion to make sure, you know, um, I was good when uh, when I got married. I, you know, yeah. I, was, I had saved up, obviously, to get married and had the baby and buy, buy a condo and stuff like that. So I had a little cushion and then it was like, OK, this is lasting a little longer than I expected. Cause yeah. I, I gave it like about a two, three month span and then it, and it went a little further. So I was like, OK. I guess I got to do what I got to do. And I jump back into the nine to five game, you know, because yeah. I, I had to do what I got to do to take care of the family, uh, pay the mortgage, you know, I got, I d- got d- bills to pay. Bro, same so. here. Like I, I, I literally luckily had like somewhat of a, a like you cushion. said, a little cushion <laughs> yeah. that I had put aside. And then um, the same thing, I, I, I luckily bought myself a, a few had, months because I ended up oh, getting okay. furloughed from work. All, all these things happen yeah. in a row, bro. But I hear what you're saying. So it, it was people listening, put a little cushion aside. <laughs> all right. Yeah, no, nah, for real. Like, yeah. honestly, that's if there's one thing that I can advise to people is yeah. like, <laughs> yeah. like, save, man, like a little something yeah, like, a little like something. save as much as they call save as much as you can. For a rainy day, whatever. Yeah. For a rainy day fun. You know what I mean? Or and, a uh, vacation or whatever, a vacation. Or yeah. Shit. Um, so, yeah. So that's what I did. I, I jumped back in the nine to five game, mm-hmm. you know, um, People were hitting me left and right, like, what's up, when, what? When when you coming back? Like, honestly, like, throughout the whole process, yeah. like, the whole year, year and some months that it lasted, and I was like, hey, it's not up to me. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know, they were probably hearing about these underground parties or stuff that were happening, yeah. but to me, I, I wasn't trying to be a, a casualty, you know? Yeah. What I mean? yeah you know what? Like, and, that, and that's another thing, and then that's a little too much to invest into a show. Oh, like, yeah. Oh, just because you guys want to get paid and go live again, okay, I'm, I can get, you know, yeah, this on my a record. Risk. Or what, yeah, yeah, it's a risk. So, yeah. you know, like, um, so I just I just waited it out just like I had to. I worked the 9 to 5. Luckily, my boy, Coke, so I'll give him a shout-out. He's part of Out the House Shots. What up, um, dog? He, you know, they're they our media crew. Yeah. Um, you know, he, and, my, and my cousin, Rude. My cousin, Rude, advised me to hit the homie Coke. Homie Coke was running a shop. You know, I, I got on the sales force. I don't, I don't really have no experience in that besides maybe selling tickets or promoting shows. But well, <laughs> you're, you're a promoter. That's it right there, dog. You yeah. should be a, yeah, that's, that's a good look right there. Your alley. Yeah, and I'm not gonna lie, I did pretty well. Uh-huh. I did really well there at the company. You know what I mean? So they they kept me there, uh-huh. uh, and I, I I stuck around as long as I could. Um, last several months there, probably last two three months, they, they had some. I don't mean I'm not dropping no names, but they had some tweaker manager that was running the shop yeah. <laughs> all of a sudden, yeah. and uh, it, it just I wasn't feeling the vibe. Uh-huh. You know, so I sort of like lacked off for them to let me go in a sense. Uh, I know it sounds whack, but. It's right about the time when things were opening up again. So it worked and out. So it worked out. Like, uh, honestly, like, I, I wasn't expecting to leave right away, but it happened. And the, the way I take everything in life is just everything happens for a reason. You know. And, uh, that, you know, pe- people were under. starting to bug me. They are like, oh, so June 15th, June 15th, June 15th. Cause that's the, yeah. That was the date that everything was open. Oh, where they, they opened the tiers and all yeah, that stuff. Yeah. Well, like, we're, all, like, we're all on the bill on the 15th, right? And I was like, you know what? No. Nah. Well, you got lined up. <laughs> Nah, I, I was turning everybody down like, hey, you know what? We're waiting it out. Yeah. You know, we're, I wanted to wait at least, time's right. at least another month or so and then make sure that, you know, okay, everything's open. So everything's going cool. So, uh, all right. <laughs> yeah, dog. Like, it's, cra- it's crazy, like, how it happened, too. And, and yeah. yeah, people throwing the underground stuff and all that. And, yeah. And, and, and yeah, that's a, that was a risk. We we were even doing, you know, here doing like Zoom interviews and yeah. stuff when we that, had that's to. That's what I thought I remember. I thought I remember yeah. you guys yeah. still being active. We kept going on Monday. We we, did, we even did the show from our garage uh, for, for okay. like a month. Like, was it like a Because that was when after the, the riots and stuff, too, because they, they didn't even want anybody outside at all. Oh, so yeah. So we weren't yeah, even yeah. coming here. Even okay. though, you know, we kept the studio, you know, a few people here. But then yeah. during that time, we, we even did Zoom uh, shows from the garage over there. We yeah. kept it moving. We're like, I, <laughs> tr- so many people were trying to, like, like, uh, like approach me and, and try to convince me to do Zoom shows and, yeah. you virtual know, shows. Yeah, virtual shows. And I, I wanted to try it. I wanted to do it. But I, I just been used to 15 years, 14, 
We're 15 years now, if you want to consider this year. And congrats on that, too. Um, it all counts. Honestly, like I always say, every five years, it's like a milestone. You yeah. know, when you, oh, you're five yeah. years, you're 10 years, you're 15, you're 20. It's like, mm-hmm. they're like milestones. So that that's the way I consider it right now. Um, hey, hey, and, you know, another thing, like you mentioned, is like, you know, things happen for a reason. And, like, mm-hmm. you know, back, like, with the, the circumstances, like, not just all the stuff with the pandemic and everything like that, but the way things have rolled out for me things always happen here and there or whatever but it's like uh, if it was 10 years ago i would have reacted different like oh yeah i've learned Probably. to kind of take things in stride and and then we can't like i i used to stress myself out way yeah. too much so i i kind of just laid back a little bit and it and it like you said things end up Falling, falling where in they place. Need. yeah 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 and not like, saying to just sit back and not do anything no, that's no, not no, what no. i'm saying honestly but. like i didn't sit back i was yeah, like no. I, I started making phone calls yeah and, like looking around but i wasn't panicking either. yeah yeah it's same thing I, yeah. I was i was not panicking like i was like you know what like w- again I, i'm not i'm not a religious person i'll put this i'll put this out there i'm not a religious person but i do believe in god and you know what? Like, I'm more of a spiritual person more than anything. I yeah, think yeah. I'm, I'm, yeah. I'm off vibes. I'm off, like, everything happens for a reason. Yeah. I'm off, like, just that whole aura, like, uh, just of, 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 of energy. You yeah, know what I mean? Yeah. And Same and, here. And I, and I felt that things were happening the way they were happening for a reason. Like, if anything, yeah. I felt that all that that happened, it was a good thing. Because I know it put everybody in a lot of financial situations and stuff like that or, st- or tricky situations and some people were wilding out some people were not but nevertheless i for the industry at least or whatever industry you're in i feel like it humbled people down Hell and people, yeah, and people, sure. people needed to do that a lot of people needed to pump their brakes and like like be, give thanks and and hell you know yeah I mean? and because you know artists like we know artists we we know a lot of artists like we yeah. don't always go you know obviously you know, talking about every situation or whatever but um that's the thing it, it humbled uh people and made them appreciate yeah uh, when they do have the platform again and and one other thing i felt the positive of it is a lot of artists got back to work dog they yeah. just got in the lab like yeah time. you know what i got yeah. i got some i'm gonna I'm drop an album now yeah, now, now they have time i'm gonna write <laughs> there's no excuse you know sometimes people you know people were out of work and all that stuff so a, they're you know. like i'm gonna write two or three albums because cats got busy dog they yeah. were productive during this time so yeah, i, I see so you, yeah. you always got to look at the positives and exactly. the negatives like i always tell people another thing is that you, you got to have positives and negatives in order it's like it's like science in order yeah. to create energy right know? exactly that's that, that's how it works that's how a battery works the, uh, it's like the, positive the electrons and the, and the was it and the, the neutrons, neutrons yeah and the, and the, and the, and yeah it? that's how it that's i how kind of remember some stuff from yeah i remember that, that <laughs> little bit of it too hey, see <laughs> and see that's the thing and then then also as we you know we get we age gracefully like yeah. myself <laughs> and you guys in this room but no but uh um, you you know we we learned a uh uh, take things in stride like i said a little more and uh yeah you know you uh, riser you and then riser, and then you know? kind of steer away from um you know we choose to be the positive side yeah. so i just like now i just like stay i try to st- i just stay oh, away from sure. negative people or oh, yeah. people that make me feel negative or a little like something's wrong like they yeah. they're messing up my aura now because like i know like, like and it's like dude i go everywhere i give people respect Yep, and yeah. you know, uh, if I don't feel it's reciprocated, and then I, you know, obviously I can I can feel that too. So yeah. I feel you. What you said too, it's, it's I always say that too. I'm not maybe not religious, but I'm spiritual, you know, and, yeah. I, and I do believe in in, in God and the higher power, and and, yeah. and and you know, like karma and like being you know being good oh, to people course, and karma. stuff like that, you know. So it's like yeah, that's why I've always been I've always been humble. Like I've never had like really any beefs or anything like that. Like, even though there's probably been some people that say, oh, Droops was beefing with this person. I'm like, what beef? I don't even know about yeah. it. And shit like, but, like, like we literally. We ate like, carne together. That was the only <laughs> yeah. beef. But, but for real, like, I, I don't know if you know anybody that has beef with me. Like, yeah. you know what I mean? Like, there's, like, I, nah, I, I've, always, I've always tried to. That's the only reason why I've stuck around 15 years in the game. Like, yeah. really, because, yeah. like. Well, when you, when you handle business the right way and kind of lay out, like, the agreement whatever mm-hmm. the mutual situation is yeah. it's like i mean it's pretty uh, c- uh, communication is everything bro so it, sure is if it's laid out there it's like there shouldn't be too many problems and i think you know the same thing with our show i mean people kind of know this is a this is a place we p- a platform but it's mm-hmm. not 
man, you guys got problems, take them somewhere else. It's not, yeah, this course. is not the spot for it. And, you know, and if it, and you know what, if we haven't made it clear enough or people can't, uh, yeah, don't come here with your problems. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm going to say that right now. Oh, yeah. You don't want to like, uh, in re- especially like I know on the, on the, on the B side show that, uh, dot net, uh, um, you know, you guys are doing like 15, 20 minute <laughs> interviews. So if you're hearing like 10 minutes of someone over here <laughs> talking yeah. about oh, yeah, yeah. like, damn, they went the whole interview. Oh, it's been, <laughs> yeah, it's been, it's been some <laughs> crazy shit on the B side over. You yeah. know what? We're going on a, we'll be 11 years. 11 years. Yeah. yeah. Much love on that. Yeah, dog. Yeah. Congrats on that. That's yeah. a, that's a big milestone. So I guess too. similar to you, we, um, luckily we've been able to kind of steer clear of all that, you know, the negativity and noise and, and be able to stay going this long. Cause if, if you yeah. didn't, you know, then we probably wouldn't still be, you know, for sure. Like, you know. I, like, honestly like most people like in any industry if they usually like either fall off like within their third or fifth year i think if you've been doing it if you've been doing it at least 10 years or more then obviously you got you're doing something right you know what i mean like or or something's clicking you know like people yeah obviously people are still working with you, you see know I mean? and so. then then the other you know like the flip side if we did get into like some of the controversy and all that kind of stuff mm-hmm. w- we'd probably be more popular <laughs> but it, but it wouldn't be but no. But se- yeah. seriously, no, that, you're right. You're but right. But it, but it wouldn't be the popularity that we want for this platform. So exactly. we just, you know, we you just try do our thing. It. We're, yeah. we're a, a neutral show, just platform for people. Hey, let, let's get into it, man. You've been. Oh, but before we get into, because I wanted to go back to some of the first stuff. But um, yeah, um, the main like you mentioned how things happen at the the nine to five, and then things started opening back up. So. Mm. What has kept you, I mean, has it been mainly the fam, like, motivated to to do this and, and continue the, the legacy of Out the House? Well, it's, it's been a combination of several things, to be real. Like, um, like first of all, you know, I, I get, you know, my daughter right now, she keeps me going every day because, don't get me wrong, even though I, I wasn't panicked or anything, there was still some tough times oh, during COVID, yeah. you know what I mean? And <laughs> I, me, I yeah. see her and I'm like, I got to do this. Um, but more than anything, I, there was a certain point, I think at the midway point of COVID, cause I'm not gonna lie. It, it was lasting longer than I expected. Oh, hell, all of and, us. And I was yeah, like, I was like, man, I thought I, it was don't get me wrong. A couple months. Maybe, yeah, I, I'm not, tra- I'm not sugarcoating nothing. This is clear and cut. You can ask me any questions, but there was a point where I was like four or five months and I was like, man, how long is this going to last? And do I even want to do it if it's going to last long enough anymore? Yeah, yeah. Like, I've already waited too long. Like, I, I was anticipating three or four months and then back to business. Like, you felt some of the uh, motivation started getting taken yeah, away. Because yeah, because I was so used to doing, like, shows yeah, every month yeah. for 14 years. And like, that's part of the shit. Yeah. So, like, it's, it's, like, been too long for me. But there was, like, a point, I think, like, probably during New Year's, I think, like, December or January. Uh, like the halfway point or a little ha- past the halfway point where I was just like reflecting. I think I might have even blazed it. I don't even smoke really. If people that know me, that yeah, I don't really uh, smoke that much anymore. I can't. <laughs> My tolerance level dropped like when I went back to school. It's and okay. I'll, I'll, take, I'll take another hit for you in a little while. <laughs> <laughs> no, but so what I did is I, I was I was like I was in the zone. I was like it was late at night. I was like, I, I went on my Instagram and I went to the very, because if you go on my Instagram, you'll notice I, I don't, my shit's not as all industry out or anything. I just keep posting shit. Yeah, yeah. So like I went to the very bottom to when I first had it for like, like the first show that I posted and I started creeping up looking one by one by every few. And I was like, Fuck, man, there's yeah. some legendary mm-hmm. fucking moments right here. Oh, like, hell yeah. like, man, I, I, I kind of I couldn't even I, I didn't even I was so, so busy doing shows and doing so many shows all the time that I didn't even realize what I've done until like I took that moment and I and I sucked it in. I soaked it in. And and, and, and then the following day, like so what I did is I ended up going back down and I started screenshotting like a bunch of like because I don't even know where some of that footage like is anymore. Yeah. Like we had like legends like and I, I was just, I, I screenshot as many as I can. I think if you go to my story, I, I put it in there of like out the house shows. My, my apologies looking at my phone while I yeah, yeah. but uh, so so people w- will go and, and check that out. But yeah, some legendary shit. Yeah. And the first one when I posted was Nipsey Hustle. Like. You know, like there wasn't too many venues back then that were booking Nipsey Hustle. Like we we booked him. We booked a lot of artists. We would book a lot of artists when they were like first blowing up or about to blow up. Yeah. You know what I mean? Um, 
But uh, yeah, I, I basically just went back and I looked, I looked, and I, and I just I started screenshotting, screenshotting, and I just posted a whole like uh, what is this called? Like a story or like that stays on your tab or whatever. Oh, like a memory or something. Yeah, the, or, like or the, the reels or whatever. Yeah, the reels. Yeah, or whatever, yeah, yeah, the ones yeah, yeah. And I just posted it on there, and I was highlights. Like, that's what it is. Highlights. There you go. There you go. So if you go to Out the House on Instagram, Out to Da House, you'll see. The, all the shows that I posted and there's just a bunch of legendary moments and that's then dope. and then that's where I hit the point where I was like okay however much more longer it takes or whenever it happens I'm going to come back and doing I'm going to come back doing shows I don't know how many I'm going to do whether it's one a month two a month five a month or if I go back to doing so, 30 a month like we used so, to do so <laughs> you you uh, in a sense um kind of from your body of work you know you you by just looking back at it instead of going and thinking too much about the next by going back to it you kind of mm. reinvigorated your own uh your own brand dog because well, yeah i mean that was like the motivation to get back to it right yeah uh, yeah it was sometimes it, it takes just sitting back getting a little lifted and you know. <laughs> but, but like you said too though i think there was a lot of like like you said oh you didn't, weren't sure when it was going to end and the, the, yeah. the media was putting out a lot of negativity about oh, oh the were. experts are saying we might never ever have live concerts again in, in yeah. ten years. You oh, know, yeah. like, and yeah. honestly, yeah. that's why that yeah. that's why me personally, we gotta tune that uh, th- shit throughout down. throughout COVID. I, I'm not gonna lie, or, or still around, whatever. Um, throughout that year, I guess you could say, I only watch TV like live news, like this many times. Oh no, uh, like, same I, here. I, I only watch it like once a month or once every I, other. I month. only watch whatever sporting events that. W- that's that, all that, I was that, watching. Sports news <laughs> or or weather, a little bit of weather. Or yeah, weather, I literally course. started like I literally plant fucking plants and flowers at my house nice, now, dog. So nice. I started. I never got to that. I I've started seen, finding I, something I to do, bro, because I couldn't watch that shit. And even now, like. Oh, there's a new variant. Ah, fuck you and your variant. I don't even give a shit no more. <laughs> like, you know what? I, you guys can give all the fear tactics you yeah. want. But um, you know what? You kind of segued into it yourself uh, going back. Um, uh, what's kind of the very, you know, what, one of the very first shows that you remember throwing? and, and That's easy. <laughs> and, and, and what? Okay, answer okay, that one okay, first. Okay, my bad. I didn't mean to. <laughs> no, no, no. I got another question after that, but I wanted to know the first one first. Well, it wasn't my very first show that I can okay. remember, but it's the very first headliner that we ever booked. Okay. And the reason why I can remember that is because for the very first show that we're doing since COVID, it's with that person. Okay. And so back 15 years ago, uh, my mom's spot, La Pachanga, downtown San Ana, not, not downtown, in the middle of San Ana, not downtown. But in the hood, Suleiman and Nettinger, for people from Santana to know, uh, we did a show with Tumex. That was our first headliner. Tumex, Tumex, Tumex. And, and my mom, my mom loved him. <laughs> yeah. Like she'll oh, tell you to the day. That's what was dope. Yeah. And like you know, it was a paisa bar. You know what I mean? It was like mm-hmm. 60 capacity. We had already been doing a couple of shows because how I first started was open mic night. For those that really been following me since back then, uh, we did open mic night as a. Uh, I tried to set up like a platform for artists in orange county at least to be able to have a consistent platform you know to perform on because there wasn't orange county wasn't really getting a lot of love back then <laughs> yeah and yeah. Uh, and it was inviting to other uh, you know we had crazy race out there we had a seco soldado uh we had a homie pause one out there we had a lot yeah. of the dope artists too Those are the homies. um but you know two mix was like a big highlight that was like our big moment like <laughs> we had a 60 capacity spot and we put like 100 people in there and it was fucking dope as shit. We had a little step stage, probably about like a, a foot and a half high, about uh, three or four feet long. Uh, Sickle Solala pr- uh, provided that stage. I'll never forget that. <laughs> <laughs> Appreciate your homie. Yeah. Uh, and uh, yeah, man, that was that was that was probably that was one of the first official like big shows that we did and, uh, back 15 years ago. Wow. And, and that's why we're bringing them back now uh, because I got, I caught word that. I don't know if it's true. He he said I, it to I me. Saw, I know what but you're he, But he told me that he's only going to do a couple shows this yeah. year. He's not trying to, you know, obviously he's going through what he's going through. Uh, he's better now, but he's not 100%. He, he but doesn't want to overexert himself, and maybe that as was he part of the, yeah. And as, maybe he, that as he was, shouldn't. He's doing a yeah. lot of other big things. A lot of people don't yeah, even know. Behind yeah. the scenes, he's doing a lot of good stuff. Hell yeah. 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 Um, so we're bringing him back. You know, I'm doing the show with him, and he decided to bring I told him it would be dope to bring back AWOL 1 because we hadn't done a show with him in forever. and yeah, I, The walrus. He's a, AWOL 1's the shit, dog. I don't care what anybody says. He's a, 
He's fucking dope. Oh, yeah. yeah. And then uh, all of a sudden he was like, oh, and maybe we could bring LMNO or someone from the Visionary. And oh, I was like, yeah. <laughs> fuck, you could do that too? Like, that would be so fucking legendary. Two the, the shifters, the visionaries, and and, and, and two Mexican descent. Yeah, O and D. Yeah, 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 all that shit. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I was like, fuck, and you know, and uh, yeah, yeah, we, we we planned it. It's coming. It's going on this Saturday. I know this is gonna release on Friday, uh, but whoever watches it that day, if they, yeah. if they hear it, it's gonna happen this yeah, Saturday. Get, uh, if if there's any left, try to get your. Tickets. Oh yeah, I, I know tickets sold fast. Uh, I'm surprised they didn't sell out sooner because we sold like. Just between us, like a hundred tickets in one day. Yeah, oh, that's like, good. Not just between us, we're we're on there, but <laughs> <laughs> but it was like, all of you. <laughs> yeah, but and there's only the spot only fits 300 capacity, so you do the math, you know, from yeah. here to then, it's it's, oh, yeah. it's 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 gonna be sold out. It's that's gonna be sold out. Uh, yeah. Probably by the walk up or I don't know. We'll see. What to no, see. So you know, so that because okay so. Well, I want to get back to these yeah, shows, yeah, yeah, but yeah, I just yeah. wanted to ask like your motivation for. Um, throwing the open mic night um mm. in the first place and then like what what made you just want to say you know what let's get a headliner and and do promotion like what made you want to do that was it the lack of good shows and you f you know maybe you uh, could put them together or you just uh, what, what was the motivation honestly it was just like I, I seen what it was snowballing into okay like uh, i i felt like it was growing at a pretty straight a pretty steady rate for like a year span like it was originally just to have a platform for orange county artists mm -hmm. uh but and then i i knew la artists i knew like long beach artists i knew like because prior to that i was already i was a dj and i was a rapper and i was producing a little bit mm -hmm. so like i was like i i had built networks that's like, where the, prior that, to that. that's the same with me and wacko that like when we came up with yeah, the show, yeah. shout out rocky everybody uh yeah. dj visit but hey, um so yeah long. wacko and myself the same thing and that's how kind of the network built and that's yeah. how we were able to you know take the platform up a little hey, what was your rap name was it my drooped? rap name yeah. no it was uh mc brainstorm mc brainstorm okay. yeah uh, the brainstorm because my, my flow was like it wasn't like how people do stories and all that and like uh, it, it was like a brainstorm if you listen to <laughs> I like could flipping off the top of the of the like kind of yeah, flipping off the top I'm of the head just, just rhyming just yeah, flowing, yeah, yeah you yeah. know and i'll come up with different sentences or quotes and like yeah. you know like it may, it'll make sense in a sense but sometimes yeah, you might have to like listen to it again at the like, end of this podcast he's gonna freestyle for there everybody. it is <laughs> play, play play a beat dog i'll do that i've done that every show I mean, retirement just just came and just announced gonna beat box. Hey, no the one thing that i haven't stopped doing is that it could because eventually like when once i once i started doing shows and it started picking up first i had to stop producing stop making my own beats second well, actually first I, I take that back first i had to stop djing because i was like all right i'd rather bring djs you know bring my homies and then second of all i had to stop producing and at like my second third year mark i had to stop rapping and that was like that hurt me because that was what i was very passionate about <laughs> but it was just the shows were, were picking up things were getting busy i needed to like focus my attention on like the shows because I was finally setting that platform from Orange County for Santa Ana, and you know, and, and it was dope because I was starting to bring in. I was eventually year by year we we're bringing in bigger artists, you know, little by little. Hey man, um, shit! And then you, and when you transitioned to, I remember at the time too, because mm -hmm. we did some of those uh, events, and then you went to the observatory and did some pretty big things over there too. Yeah, bro. from from La Pachanga, we we went to Malone's first though. Okay, we you know, yeah, that's I re I remember oh, Malone's. Malone's. Yeah, because Malone's is that's that's I honestly would say that's where like I was post Pachanga. <laughs> I was post Pachanga. Yeah. yeah, not too many people were around the Pachanga yeah. <laughs> that are still around right now, yeah, yeah. or at least still rapping. Or or, or 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 you know networking with us, um, besides maybe two Max, my my cousin Rude, you know, and uh, Indigenous has been around since the beginning. What up, Digi? Uh, yes. You know, uh, a lot of there's a few, there's a good amount of people. Don't get me wrong, um, but Malone's was like, it was my own little project to be honest. Uh, it, it was 150 capacity. It was only like 50 more, no, 100 more capacity of my mom's spot. Which is a step up, you know, sixty to one hundred fifty. It's it's progress, you know. But it was a little step stage still. Yeah. It still only had a PA system, so we still had to bring in everything else ourselves. And then, like, the the, the reason why it was my project is because, like, every year, they started expanding it. They started making it bigger because our shows were getting bigger. So they saw like the potential of like their business to thrive. 
and yeah, and they, they used to have a mechanic shop so they knocked down a wall and they built up an actual stage and then they probably finally brought like monitors and, and like, then little you could stuff. see that it became more of a partnership now these guys can see oh this guy's not just here fucking you know using our spot yeah. so people could get drunk like this this no this, yeah we're, he's we're, bringing us business yeah we're there at least like it's a, a solid three three yeah. four years like after we did one year la pachanga like three four years at, mm-hmm. at malone's and then at my fifth year mark um when i went back to school for my ba in business management um that's when the observatory found me that's when this guy jeffrey schumann found me mm-hmm. everybody knows him you've probably seen all the big festivals that's what he does um you know um and th- he asked me like hey we're opening up a new venue called the observatory like uh wondering if you could come in and maybe you want to help promote sell tickets for some of our events and i was like shit why not like i b- I-, I was always stuck in 21 and over venues like I, I during Malone's, I wasn't just doing Malone's. I did like the Shore Ultra Lounge in Long Beach. We did the Old School Rhythm Lounge, which is now Cuban Pete's in Long Beach. Um, I think I did like the Terrace in Pasadena. Oh, I remember that uh, yeah. spot. I think too. I remember doing Camp Low there. It was so legendary. Um, and like so, like they saw what we were already. Th- I was already building that that you know that that base. You know what I mean? Yeah. And that culture. Um, so when they hit me, and it was my first all ages venue, so I was like. Shit, I always wanted at least an 18 and over venue, but all ages. I was like, fuck it, let's run it, you know. And, and uh, you know, they had, they had their own funds, and we just we just came up with the ideas, and we made the shows happen. So that was less of a risk I had to take. To <laughs> back then, it, I was everything was out of my pocket. I literally like put all my checks that I got from like my work out of my, hey, and, I, and I lost for like two years probably straight. But building that network is what really got you. Uh, building that network of all those different DJs, artists, and all well, that, oh, and then yeah. going to that level. It, that's really it's the same, you know, here, too. Obviously, we figured out, you know, a way to sustain and maintain, but yeah. it's the same thing, dog. We we work and put our money in and reinvest yeah. like we have to, like, with, like, you know what I'm saying? And to provide yeah. a platform and show people that we are serious, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. but, um, but man, dog, reinvesting in yourself. I'm just glad you said that because yeah, it's important for not only you know any business person but artists and stuff. Yeah, and it was during a crazy time when I decided to go full time too because that was like around the time of 9/11, so that's when the whole they had the whole economy collapse and stuff like that too. So like I was at this job and they hadn't gave me a raise in like almost two years, and I've only worked like three jobs ever in my life, like mm-hmm. really like three or four like. And so I was like, you know what? I'm tired of this fucking job. Let me see if I can make this happen full time, like a, like my actual thing to do. And you know, it took two years of EDD to fund my shit, but <laughs> yeah. you know, like it, eventually it happened. And I was yeah. like, fuck, I'm doing this full time. And it was funny because my I had a lot of doubters. Even my own parents and like family were like, oh, so you got a job yet? You got a job yet? Yeah. And I was like yeah i got a job yeah this is what i'm doing now this is my job and then eventually <laughs> i'm we, just know, my own boss yeah pretty much you know yeah. and, and that, that was the f- that was actually the fulfilling part it was like uh, like obviously first putting on the platform for orange county and santa Ana, uh but uh, but also getting the respect for my family and, and er- everybody else was like oh shit you actually did y- y- it. because you know? sometimes um you know it, and it, and it's not only a it, it's a not only a culture thing it's an maybe an old school thing or you know older than us I, I could say but um where you know they just feel like the standard normal oh this is what you need to do or you have to go to college and then you have yeah, to become yeah. this and people don't understand like even no one would have understood like 10 15 years ago that you could be a fucking youtuber and make millions <laughs> of dollars <laughs> That's what all the kids want to be nowadays. Yeah, <laughs> yeah you know what I mean? Though. On TikTok and ride a skateboard yeah. and you're fucking set for life. You know what I'm saying, yeah, dog? It, to it, a song. It, it, like, it's just th- these are the things that, like, times change and we, we, we maneuver with it. And so yeah. uh, speaking on that, though, that's that's pretty dope that you were able to kind of uh, shed that in your own family. Like, yeah. look at this is my job now. I I throw shows and that's yeah, my shit. Yeah, for real, for yeah. real. Yeah, it was, it was fulfilling, you know, yeah, for sure. Like, yeah. Being able to like you know take care of my mom's and yeah you know put a down payment for her first new car and shit like that you know and buy my pops a little whip like that's the real shit between me and my brother my you know my sister it was cool like doing stuff like that you know what i mean and more than anything because i i love hip-hop i love the culture like this is like i i envision myself being a rapper 
Like I know it didn't turn into to me being a rapper or a basketball Same player, here, which, no. which I love being. Yeah, I yeah. love basketball. I, yeah. love, I, I swore I was gonna make yeah, it. Yeah, BTL was the biggest basketball player. <laughs> no, I mean not player, but a fan in the world. So uh, I'm thinking, damn, when yeah. I started, when I didn't grow at all until I was about 17, I figured I don't think it's gonna happen. Yeah, that's how I felt too. <laughs> I was like, shit, I already got busted for fucking <laughs> like fucking fireworks and weed on the campus and shit. Yeah. So. It's not. It's not happening. Yeah, it's smoking like, too much weed already. <laughs> like, okay, maybe I'm not gonna be president now just because they got some stuff on my record. <laughs> you know? No, but you know, like, but that's that's the real shit. We kind of maneuver and adapt, mm-hmm. uh, not only to our situation, but what we learned along the way and the network we brought along. Because the same thing here, dog. I was like, you know, I was an artist. I was doing yeah. different things, like, you know, within it, and that's how I, you know, started creating a network of at least people that i like have in my phone or yeah. whatever and yeah. and then uh you know that that's what helped kind of create this platform that's still going that's what's and up, uh man. you know even meeting you and stuff like that bro it's like so we're gonna get to that in a second my brother got you guys oh just real quick i was gonna say because you said that uh you know how much you love hip-hop so but like what what is some of your earliest memory of like when you're first uh hip-hop you know like your first uh like the first like artist or my first song or something that you heard that you were like oh well, my first, my first hip hop like songs, I would say that I can remember. I know there was more that came before this, uh, but I just remember hearing like um, it was Easy E, the motherfucking real G's. Oh, yeah. I heard that and I was like, what the fuck? Because I was like, that was probably when I was like about 13, 14 yeah, yeah. around there. So I was like, I was like, man, like this is some fucking dope shit. Hey yo, doctor, what the? And, and, it, and, it, and, it was, and it was crazy because during that time I sort of liked Snoop too, but I heard Easy E and yeah. I was like, who the fuck is this? Like, exactly. I fuck with this uh, cat, you know. I don't care about the beef and all that shit. We were like, bumping both diss songs at the same time, like back to back. Yeah. that one and then the Dre did right after. That and then hearing like like Wu Tang, I think I heard the the Triumph, I think, or saw the video for it, mm-hmm. and I was like. I was blown away because it was it was something else. I already had heard hip hip hop and rap, like West Coast gangster rap, I guess you could say. Yeah. But when I heard Wu Tang and I heard the Triumph and I seen the video and I was just like, they're doing something else. Like this wordplay is different yeah. from gangster rap. It's different from like the West Coast stuff. Yeah. Like it, it really opened my mind to like a whole different. Hey, not, I'm glad you like said that Wu Tang thing because I actually got a. a uh, on on my homie's podcast, mm-hmm. shout out to Rock. He was one of the uh, original, you know, helped us create the B side originally. Okay. Uh, that had the shop in the front, and then yeah, he's got his podcast, Street Scholars in Nashville, and he had me as a guest talk because his take was, I don't understand why people like Wu Tang. Like it was just and different. D- there was a couple things, and there was like a, it was a. a Drake over two he has some, <laughs> but he makes interesting topics bro but yeah, yeah, the yeah. Wu-Tang thing I just I just I'm glad you said it because maybe it's not for everybody but oh, yeah. Wu-Tang came around I think it was the same for me at a time where it needed to have like you needed that that uh contrast yeah. to whatever else was there. it was like a like a rugged uh gangster NY style like yeah so, yeah, yeah. So, east coast but shit. it almost came out like, almost like a comic book almost like they were characters you know how yeah. they did the kung fu and then, stuff and, and all then that. they and went that. around the kung fu characters yeah. like if yeah. people pay attention enough and i i grew up in that you know obviously in that yeah. genre and shit so and I, I don't mean to mention the third thing but the third thing was this when i heard my brother try to rap like he well he didn't try to rap he wrote down a pretty dope rap and shit and i was like what the fuck you rap and shit like <laughs> that's dope and shit yeah, yeah. and then like he didn't really pursue it after that but it sort of motivated me motivated me to try to start rapping so yeah. i started freestyling and, and fucking around with inspiration shit. too and, and so that's that's what helped me that's how you stayed in this and like, the hip-hop scene. yeah, yeah exactly. so it, it trans if i wouldn't have been rapping all those years like before that before doing shows like i probably would have never done shows you know yeah. but i but because i was rapping and i I remember hitting up Sick Jack in like a long time ago when I wasn't even doing shows and I was just like, hey, I hit him up at the end of a show, like, let me get a feature and shit. Yeah. I remember hitting up like Ghostface, so like outside of the House of Blues one time. <laughs> uh, oh no, I hit up Tumex at the go at the Ghostface and uh Gangstar show. My bad. I'll take that back. And I hit up Tumex and he was selling yeah, CDs out there like he was always doing back in the days. Uh, yeah. And then I got his info. 
And then, like, after that, I think I got busted or some shit. But I lost a lot of contacts, but it, it's, it's crazy because it ended up coming full circle eventually. Yeah. And they remembered me, and then I ended up getting their information through Facebook. That's kind of like the or same whatever. thing, like, the, the links that we've made and the networking we've done is the same thing. We've gone out about our business, but yeah. they know we're, we're here, and this is our our shit too yeah, and yeah, we're yeah. putting our foot in the to the culture too like for so sure for when sure. it's all said and done you know what i mean they're gonna know who out the house and b-side show and yeah, all that yeah, shit. yeah. All, all the elements matter bro yeah, like, yeah, yeah. like it's not just not just the elements of just rapping djing graffiti and break dancing or any other of the elements it's also the shows you know the radio shows yeah, media has you know, become a thing yeah, yeah it's especially now I, I, like I, everything matters there everything uh, everything yeah. contributes to the to to keep it alive yeah you know what i mean it all it all works so. hand in hand and dog and then even like having the platform that's how another reason we've linked like some artists have utilized the platform here mm -hmm to to throw a different type of like you know their own event their whatever own, it own, might be but their own radio show or yeah you know. whatever or or we've thrown live shows back here but we, i mean obviously we don't do that too much anymore like mm -hmm. i'm talking about where we had this oh back, like the actual i like don't know if you've concert. been here before but we've had like this shit packed in here <laughs> in store events <laughs> in okay. this studio yeah. basically yeah. in store events yeah. like intimate concerts we some would stream them, them and some of them yeah. got a, yeah stream and sometimes they got extreme like yeah. Yeah. a lot of people <laughs> in this bitch but um but I, I was gonna ask like um you know I, we're, we're gonna kind of start to tail it off a little bit because we got the rabbit fire round coming up but <laughs> just some quick questions at the end but yeah what i was gonna ask you is um is there like any favorites that that come to mind some of your like just i know you've thrown so many but just some that come to like mind the first two oh, the favorite shows. i think you spe spoke on some earlier but yeah just like because of the, the turnout because of the just the, the artist everything just came in yeah or, or just the vibe even if everything it wasn't was just all a million place. people it just yeah. felt good man there's so many shows like we've done everything obviously from the two mexes to the wu tangs to the yg's and kendrick lamar's like like we've done everything but I, i'll put a top three i guess out there oh, man i almost want to at least put a top five but you, you, and i don't want to elaborate on them too much i'll elaborate on like one or two of them but like go ahead and you but, yeah, throw them in there man but I, just but yeah because people want to know man you be they uh, some of these people that are going to tune in probably been at some of these especially shows. with so many if they pop up first after yeah. so many you've done then they got to open yeah. yeah i would say probably like uh and i'm going to go like in a backward motion just about um, which not necessarily, they're all very legendary, but, uh, I already mentioned it earlier. Kendrick Lamar was this one that's just like, shit, I can't believe we did that show. Cause we did yeah. it at the observatory mm -hmm. and it, we did it during the time he was already like fully blown. That's what I was going to say. Stadiums. Cause yeah. he was already doing stuff, but then like when he got with Dre and everything kind of yeah. happened, then it was even, well, like, the thing I, is that I'll the thing that people book. don't know is that we booked him like when observatory just first happened when mm -hmm. he was barely blowing up for like new year's eve so people didn't even know that we did that show and by the talent buyer building that relationship and working with them on other big events we were able to bring him back like five six years later when he was already fully blown where he was already getting like six figures minimum and we, had, we we only had like we had like a the, th the thing that was crazy is that we had a 24 to 48 hour notice the show was in two days basically and talent buyer hit me up and he's like droops should we should we do this show with Kendrick Lamar? It's gonna be this price. It's gonna be expensive because he's charging us a shitload of money, but we only have forty eight hours to sell it out. Yeah. I'm like, bro, we've sold out other shows in like twenty four hours. You're telling me we can't sell out a Kendrick Lamar show at an observatory <laughs> yeah, venue, yeah, like right. like an intimate sized venue? Yeah. Like fuck yeah, do it. And he's like, all right, I'm taking your word on it. And <laughs> fuck, he made the call. He printed me out the tickets. I put them in stores. We announced. And boom, it was done with bef within 24 hours, like under Damn. 24 hours. I don't even remember how many hours, like probably five, 10 hours. He was blowing me up like, hey, stop selling those tickets. I'm like, bro, they're all gone. Yeah. I'm like, yeah. I don't have no more tickets. Like, Because yeah. a lot of people knew me back then like that, like as the plug. Like whenever the shows were sold out at the observatory, I still had like my, uh, my, my, my tickets. So. Hey, and thus, uh, before you say the next show, and thus the caption and some of the posts. Yeah. Don't text me, man. I don't have any more tickets. <laughs> no texts, no calls, yeah, no, no emails. Calls. I'm not um, hearing it. Yeah, all that shit, man. Um, yeah, so, 
And then I'll, I'll go into another one. I'm not going to elaborate too much on it. Uh, but um, I would say uh, probably the Wu-Tang. I think it was a 25-year anniversary, I think it was. Dang. I don't know. It was at the Shrine Auditorium. They gave me like a week or two notice on that one. And it was like, the, sa- and it was like the same thing. We ended up backpacking off, off of that one and doing them at the Observatory, too. And the Shrine and the Observatory are two different sizes. LA, were they all there? Huh? Yeah, they were all there. That was the crazy part is that they were all there plus God. some extra. And um, I even – I think we had two mix. I had MC Life rock the L.A. one at the Shrine, and he brought out two mix as a special guest, which is super dope. Oh, nice. Um, and then we did the, the OC one, and uh, that was legendary. Just I'm not going to go into hard, like I said, into that one. Uh, but one that I will go into – man, I'm probably going to keep it at four – is uh, <laughs> uh because this one I this would be a whole nother podcast he got some he, this yeah. dude's been throwing oh, imagine, shows huh? man yeah no, and then uh i would say back to basics oh yeah and back to basics because it was um it was one of our own festivals that we did we did it for about five years even though we skipped the year in between and then we skipped two years when we we're gonna do it again but everything got shut down so we done five years of it, and uh, it was our third year an- annual one, our third annual one that we did, and it was a two day, back to basics festival event. But it was inside a venue, inside the observatory. And, oh, so two. And that was insane because we fit like I don't know two, three thousand people in a nice. venue that holds like a thousand five hundred, like a thousand, twelve hundred, thousand five hundred in one room, and then like about three hundred in one room, and then they had the patio area. So in, in all, it was. It was and it was legendary. We had everybody from Sick Jackin to Feral Munch to like Black Alicious to like fucking Souls of Mischief to Evidence. Uh, fucking oh, I wish I remember the whole lineup, man. I have so many more names. There was See, like yeah, there was like at least ten names memory. on one day and That's then like ten names on another day. Vicious All big headliners. lineup right there. Like it was right? re- it was ridiculous and it, it honestly it was crazy because. Right after that, I ended up getting, um, I don't know what the fuck you call it, I guess sick or something like that. And it was because during those times, those beautiful before that year, I was doing a lot of the stuff on my own. Like I had like one or two other go-to guys that would back me up, Mm -hmm. but I didn't really have like a squad squad. Our our circle was always sort of like a certain amount of people. And um, and, and then when when I went to hospital and everything, they were like, there's nothing wrong with you. Like you just, you, you, just you probably wore yourself out. I wore myself out, and, and it was a. Uh, I was like, maybe it's like an anxiety attack because you had high blood pressure when you came in, but when you left, there was nothing. You and they did cat scans. They did like all this crazy shit. You needed to lay down there for a couple of days to yeah. realize you just needed some rest. Yeah, but it, that's that's exactly what I did. I yeah. took some rest. I I ended up going on a vacation. And I I, I think I remember around the time when like and you could see like you know what I'm because it, it was for, overwhelming to yeah. to do that type of event. I know a lot of people that do it right now and they're doing it in outdoor settings and they're doing it on bigger like lots or actual arenas and shit like that. But we did all that inside a minimal capacity venue with a lot of legends. Yeah. And it was just like, it was just amazing, bro. It was, it was, it was, it was a good feeling. Like, I'm not going to lie. I remember after that, I was like, man, it was like one of those type of events where I felt like if I was fucking gone, if I died, like, <laughs> like, fuck it. So, so even you know with I mean? the, like, even with all those, like, um, even with all the stress going on like that, cause you guys just only have a minimum people handling yeah. it. You, you're still able to enjoy the the performances and stuff like stuff? Yeah, like, well, it happened after. Oh, it didn't okay. happen during the event or anything like that. But I know you had to be running around. and. Oh, yeah. Well, that every, if, every, if everybody if anybody knows me, I usually wear a backpack, and I'm just, like, running yeah, around know, the I event the and backpack, shit. Yeah. I'm running around the venue. I'm always, like, making sure things are right. And, I like, even though it's not my job <laughs> to do a certain thing, I want to make sure everybody's cool and everybody's doing their thing. Hey, you know it's I mean? crazy you say that because even the events, like, I've done with you, yeah. Like you'll have me there to be a host. Yeah. But I do I I go around and make sure I'm I'm looking for the who's next. I'm asking, you know, like uh whoever's the like, like Janet. 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 What's up, Janet? Yeah. Uh whoever, yeah, and uh you know who's next. Okay, let me make sure they're ready because 
we have this much time the yeah. DJ, and then they got to be ready i'm not going to announce them and then everybody's looking around so you know i, I almost play like a kind of stage manager on myself <laughs> when i host yeah but yeah, that's yeah. nobody tells me to do that i do that on my own no yeah it's just your your natural habit yeah, like yeah. You're just used to like and just but. wanted to run you know I, i've always looked at things and i don't know i'm sure you see them this way too i've told my brother but mm -hmm. as producers or doing different shows even behind the scenes or when i'm hosting whatever i always look at it like i want to make it so that the people that paid to get in mm -hmm. they they fucking remember that yeah, show you, you want them, right you want them to have the experience you yeah know what i mean and that that was always like our type of shows that's why we're always trying to do like something different with our shows like yeah we weren't just trying to give you like the artists and they perform and that's it. Like yeah. we, we started at the time we started acting like we started adding like dual headliners. We started having them coming out with special guests. We started having like three or four headliners. So we maybe started doing back to basics and then eventually started doing festivals and shit like that, you know? Um, and, uh, yeah, man, it, it's, 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 a, it's a beautiful thing, you know, and I'm, I'm glad to be back. Like, um, We're I, I don't want to skip that the other show. I'll go through it quickly. Yeah, yeah. I'll say, I, and I remembered my my fourth one, and I was gonna go on to my fifth one, but Nipsey Hustle. Yeah. Uh, I wouldn't say a specific one, uh, but it was just dope to be able to book him when he when he was first coming out. It was dope to book him when he was in his midway point, and it was dope to book him right before he passed. And he was always like a super humble cat. Mm -hmm. um, and then my my last one that I, I, I didn't mean to go quick after Nipsey Hussle he's a legend and I respect him and everything but I don't want to I know we got a time limit <laughs> um, but but Big Daddy King you oh. brought it up earlier off the oh, air yeah, but yeah. I, I have to bring it up I have to bring it up because like it wasn't our biggest show it wasn't our biggest turnout but it was one of those rare live performances where it, it fucking it, it didn't just blow the fans mind it blew my fucking mind and I've seen yeah. so many I had seen so many other legendary shows or big popping artists or like before that, and it still n didn't amaze me. Uh, I, I I have almost probably everything he's put out oh, okay. from cassette to everything to, to, to uh, yeah, and and then I've seen him perform live back in the day, like yeah. when it was the point between where he was real big and there was that transition where and then where he kind of came. Yeah. It was in that middle point. I seen him perform live in. Uh, it was actually industry hills area um, okay. not too far from where we're recording right now but yeah uh i i've i've seen him so the he's in my top like whatever that you can say like yeah as a, like big daddy kane uh what is he checks all the boxes yeah when yeah, it yeah. comes to an artist or an mc mm -hmm. this guy performance lyrics songs hits fucking yeah like the, like the thing about people if, if you've never seen him live like anybody that's watching like just understand that he's in his maybe 50s or 60s but he raps uh, like early i think uh, yeah m m early to mid 50s early now. to mid 50s yeah but he rocks like if he was 21 years oh, old oh yeah he has no hype man yeah he has like he has no ad libs. Sometimes he'll have a couple of dancers, but he does the moves with them. Yeah, that's but, what's crazy. Yeah, <laughs> but but most artists his a his his uh his age they'll have like the DJ backing them oh, up, yeah. or they'll have an actual like some like, guy some saying hosting. all his lyrics. Yeah, he just or, comes or, in every or fourth or, fucking word. Or they'll rap over some of their lyrics. Not yeah. not all their lyrics, yeah. but but just every few. You know, and, yeah. I, and I respect that too for OGs. You know, if they need, as long as they're not rapping over their yeah. the whole song, then it's. No, nah, there's a way around but, it. These guys. But yeah, there's a way around it. But he did not have, like, maybe the chorus was there, I think, maybe. Yeah. But he, he, besides that, he was like, he was rocking ain't every fucking no verse. Half stepping. Yeah. Man. I'm the big daddy Kane. Hey, dude, that shit's hard. We did Anybody him. listening that don't know, go do your research yeah, on that. Yeah, do your now. research. We did him at the observatory in the constellation room, which is our small room. Which was uh, it turned out it was it wasn't like I said it wasn't our big most packed out venue, um, but I think we messed up by booking him in Permona at that venue on the top. I forget what it's that called. Fox Theater. Yeah, but it's in the Fox Theater, but it's in the very very top. Yeah, it's a, know, there's like a smaller room up there. So it's like on the patio. I forgot what they call that one specifically. I know. I've yeah, been there. yeah. And, I've been and that was shows. a that was a pretty good turnout. He actually had Russell Peters come and DJ that show for yeah. him. That was fucking crazy. That's his shit. boy. Huh? Yeah, that's his, that is his boy. Because I follow him. So. Like, yeah, we got pictures with him and Russell Peters and shit. That shit was crazy. Hey man, um, we're glad you're back, bro. Yeah. Like I'm, doing these shows, dog. I'm, like, I'm glad I'm back too. And you know what? Like classic shit. 
you know, I really hope that I could be around another 10, 15 years at least. Um, you know, I, I came back around to, you know, there's a lot of other things that I'm doing on the side uh, that I'm working on, but this this is like my thing. And if I can make it happen for another full time thing, yeah, I'll take it another 15 years. Yeah. Hell like, yeah. I, like, I don't mean to put everybody on the spot or anything like that, uh, but I, we need all the supporters, all the original fans like like all the radio shows all the artists like like and like and everybody we need everybody's support right now more than ever and you know what else though i i i push too i hear i like and i agree with you 100 but i also push like there's a lot of new fans out there man yeah. they just got once they're put on it and they hear some of this stuff and get out there if you haven't been to an out the house show you guys need to check it out they're always dope lineups yeah. You know and, what I'm and saying? And if there's any artists out there looking to rock on our shows, we always yep. offer that opportunity, you know, too. So, uh, yeah, hit me up. Hit me up. You know the, you know the tag. It's Instagram. It's out the house. That's out D-A house, not T-H-E, out the house. Uh, we've been in the game 15 years long. Uh, you My know, brother it, Drew. It's been, an, it's been an honor being able to, to uh, keep the culture alive. And, uh, you know, I'm going to do my best this year, you know. We, we want to revamp our shows. We want to add different elements to, to out the house we have a couple new members on the team cool man uh, so hey we want to want to make want to want to give the people the experience you know we want them to remember these shows so. well and then speaking on that man and thank you dog i'll be hosting another like because i'm gonna i was gonna mention you yeah. know some of the cool shows i've been to but mm -hmm. um you know uh the uh july 30th yeah um, Man, uh, the spot, that's a new spot you're doing now. La Santa, we've actually, we're doing that a couple years prior. Okay. Um, I haven't, I don't know if I've been to that spot. Yeah, we, we started doing a couple of shows there because uh, our original time. Or Talent maybe Bar when I get there, I'll be like, oh, yeah, I've been here. Yeah, okay. it's dope, dog. Honestly, okay. you walk you walk in and you go down the stairs, so you go down into like an underground type feel. Oh. Uh, we did Karis one there before, um, before everything shut down. He was tripping out like yo this is fucking dope yeah what the fuck because you go down like a like underground like an attic and shit but you you get in there and it's like a nice layout and the ac's kicking and you know sounds right uh we did the alcoholics uh before which we're doing that show july 30th july 30th i'll be hosting Santa. yeah he'll be B side hosting. will be in the building man and thank you for that it's a dope go ahead and mention yeah. the lineup man july yeah 30th yeah um uh, well i want to remind people uh, the last time uh, the alcoholics were there we had a razkaz and um fucking exhibit showed up that shit was fucking crazy oh, that dope. shit blew my fucking mind because he didn't show up to our la event but he ended up showing up to our santa Ana event so i was like i didn't believe people when they told me he was people like, randomly oh, like come to some of these joints i remember yeah. seeing a uh, king t showed up to the other alcoholics oh yeah at, at the observatory oh, I remember and that. speaking yep. of that like see and that's one of the ones that i was gonna mention is mm -hmm. like i got to host i think it was the constellation room but uh -huh. Um, I got you, you had me host the alcoholic show they did there. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And I remember because that was one of the ones. It's just good vibes, bro. Yeah, like that, that's why the I brought crowd them back. had fun, bro. Th that's why I brought them back. Yeah. Because like every show that we've done with the alcoholics, people just have a fucking great Hell time. Yeah, There's no drama. Yeah. Like everybody's just having fun and yep. shit. Um, and then I'm super excited because on this one, I don't, I'm sure you saw we added Wild Child. This was the uh, from, uh, from Loop yes. Pack and shit. Uh, yeah, and this was the uh, the announcement that just got announced. Like, what was the beginning like a, of this week? Or yeah, it's like about a week ago yeah, and yeah. shit. So it's not just the alcoholics, but we have uh, Wild Child from the Loop Pack coming through. And um, I don't know, I might still add someone. We'll see. See, uh, <laughs> he's keeping you posted. But when this drops, you you might hear a new announcement by then. So yeah. who if, knows? If you don't mind me dropping them again, I just need to let the people know. Uh, but yeah, July 10th, come through two mix, A Wall One, yes. LMNO is gonna be fucking dope, fucking dope vibes, dope music. Uh, July 16th, we got Sugar Free, uh, Sat, one of Santa Ana's favorites pam, 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 and shit. Pam, pam. He, that's just gonna be just a party. If you wanna come party with us? Uh, we skip. We didn't skip the twenty third. We're actually doing one with uh, with Pex One. He's like a local artist in Orange County, but he has a strong buzz. He's gonna be doing the, the upstairs room. We go click. Oh yeah, uh, click, Pex. Click, he's gonna. He's actually to gonna sleep. be coming through the B side oh, soon because uh, yeah, I think he's dropping it. Just dropping a new an album. album. Yeah, that, that's, that's why right. I fucked yeah. with him, and I was like, I'm gonna I'm gonna give you my date that I was gonna do, but we're doing it upstairs. Oh dope. Um, and then on the thirtieth, we're gonna end it with the Alcoholics and uh, a Wild Child. Um, that's gonna be lit. But, but since I I could officially say this. People are going to probably hear it here first before we even announce it next week. 
but I'm going to name some of the August shows. Um, August 6th, we, we, yeah. we, we, we took it back to the younger crowd, sort See, of. We get exclusives. Yeah, you get exclusives right here. Um, we're going to, I don't know if, if the viewers know of him or if you guys know of him, but he's, to me, he was dope because he fucked with some of the newer West Coast cats that I was listening to while I transitioned to the observatory, like the YGs, the Dom Kennedys, all those people. Uh, but Casey Veggies, we have him coming through August 6th. Oh, okay. yeah. um, and we're going to have him come through uh, in August 6th at La Santa, too, okay. uh, with special guest T Fly. Uh, he has some dragons with Tom, Dom Kennedy, YG, all yeah, them. Yeah. Um, and that's going to be a dope one. And then I can officially announce this one, which they're for sure not going to hear this till Monday, but they'll hear it here on B side. Uh, but we have uh, the legendary Dub C from the West Side Connection oh, coming through. Oh, shit. And that's going to be for my birthday, August 14th skip, at La skip, Santa. Double up, so, double up. Okay. Yeah. And then yeah. we have a, we have two two other shows in, at the end of August that those I can't announce because of contractual oh, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I hear politic you. issues. But they want not, even, not even issues, but just They politics. have to announce it for some time. So, there has to be, a, con- there has to be, be a contract and a deposit. Yeah, and all that. Hey, you know what? We'll I've, hear about it soon, I'm sure. I've yeah, got you will. to host a Dub C show before. Uh, Dev and the Dude was there. Oh, uh, sick. And then, uh, uh, I, I, hey, man, rest in peace, DJ Crazy Tunes. Man. Oh, but, rest in peace. Rest but, in peace. But uh, we were, it was crazy because we were chilling in the green room, blazing out with Crazy Tunes, and then, Dude, he was a cool ass dude, man. Oh, we were vibing out, bro. Chill. And I was hosting while he was DJing, so it was like we were going back and forth. So it was like we had to blaze first so we could get that. No, I mean, I'm <laughs> kidding. I'm kidding. But 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 then Dub C shows up after when it, when it was closer to the time. Yeah. And he's looking. And he just comes and oh fuck, he's tripping out on his brother. Like, yeah, blowing how's his brother shit. fucking know all these food? Like there was a few of us in there chilling with it. He was like tripping out, dog. It was oh, cool, okay. man. But hey, I, I was gonna mention a couple. Of, you know, the alcoholic show was good vibes um, that we did mm-hmm. that I hosted with you, and then also um, uh, that I mentioned to you earlier that the far eye with uh, oh with yeah, Planet, the, Asia. Uh, Planet Asia, PA man, and, yeah, and that was uh, he brought a, a, a tri state on tri state out. Yeah, uh, I remember yeah, that. Yeah, bro, that. it was it was it was dope, bro. Just the vibes and. Like you're saying, it doesn't have to be a million people. It's the, nah, it nah. was packed in there. Yeah. It was just the, like the venue, the spot was a little smaller, but it, it, it doesn't a constel- matter. It was a constellation the room. The constellation room. It, the experience in there is a lot. It's almost better than the big room. A lot it's of like some intimate. It's easier to get a beer at the bar. Uh, <laughs> I remember seeing Action Bronson in the constellation room. That oh, shit was shit. crazy, yeah. dog. Shit, standing on fucking on top of the bar, rapping, throwing <laughs> people off stage, like. And oh yeah, I've seen uh, like oh <laughs> all shit, the videos yeah, shit. yeah, <laughs> so, tossing people. Hey, yeah, um, uh, and 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 the one like of one of my favorite because I'm a big Outcast fan. Those oh, when you big boy, big boy, and yeah. uh, and, and uh, Sleepy Brown, Brown bro. That, really that shit was the, that was, wasn't even our most packed out room in the big room either. But it was the sup- bi- super the big room. Yeah, yeah it that was, was the big the, one. That was in the big room. That was but it was tour. it was it was crazy to me because I'm a, a big fan. And then um, what what happened is after I, I like went off because they cleared the stage. You know, some artists they have yeah. it as part of the shit is and and I understand it, Doug, and people mm. that don't don't host or don't promote or like people that's just part of the shit they bring their own people or they clear the stage yeah so they cleared the whole stage even i got off because their dj was going to announce them at first or, or oh, somebody yeah, I think so i think i remember that somebody and then i went to the backstage and i remember asking his manager i think slash wife mm-hmm. um like i just i just want to get a flick after man it's, they're, i'm fans of outcast so i'm gonna check out the show and come back so she, oh cool she's all cool. She cool so yeah. a little while later the dj i guess told them you know what that dude or somebody yeah. told him that dude was hyping up the crowd yeah he's hosting yeah he's like moving. we'll let him in, and fuck dog i was still waiting right there at the time and 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 then they go hey they want you to go back on and, and announce <laughs> and dog for me that was a good moment i don't yeah, have it. i wish i had it on man. film or something but yeah. that, for me it's in my memory bank so that's good enough but that i just wanted to mention that bro that's one of my uh, dope memory for, for me for at sure. uh, out the house productions no nah, yeah man uh, i remember like they even they were so cool too like after they invited me on their fucking tour bus and oh shit, yeah i got a quick <laughs> flick and i was like yeah. i was fucking geeking out yeah yeah it's Out, cool, outcast man. like you you yeah. don't even you don't even see those shows anymore because they won't perform together or yeah. whatever. Uh, and then Big Boy is hardly ever out here, at least yeah. from what I know of. And then uh, and that be what he don't he don't 
he just don't. Um, yeah, yeah. I mean, Andre three thousand. My bad. I was yeah, thinking of something. Yeah, uh, but but he did, he doesn't even rock like on a solo tip. So I haven't seen. So it's yeah. it's a rare show. So when I heard Big Boy, I was like, "Fuck yeah, right. man! Let's fucking do this shit." Yeah, I I'm gotta a, say the the those um for sure like. Probably every every one of the cycle realm shows. Oh yeah, man, for I, sure. Honestly, Those were one, one time we were doing media. You know I was bad. I just ran into Send Dog randomly. Oh hey, what's up? We're just you, you know. Dude, like, I got to like, host a couple bad. of those too. Those well, shows were good. And vibes. some other. I've I've hosted. Um, luckily, man, dog. And then another thing, like you said, over the years, mm -hmm. you establish what the so them them dudes are like. They're homies, dog. Like yeah, fam to me they're now. They're brothers. And shit so to me. like yeah. So I've got to host a few of their shows and. And uh, bro, it's always good times, and they got oh, yeah. their, they got a mean fan base, and then you always run into cats that just show Six up. Six side uh, army, man. Hey, like for real, I could take out one of those top five. <laughs> yeah, I'll, I could take it out and then plug that one back yeah. in because yeah. there's a, yeah. no because there's a specific Psychoram show that we okay. did because everybody knows that we've we've been fucking with them since almost since we started more like twelve years ago when we when we first booked them at Malone's, and then um, and then a couple other times um, obviously throughout the observatory. But there was one particular one. I think it was for the 20 year anniversary of the original Psycho Realm. And I, and I convinced Jack, because we were pretty close at that time, even though he told me it's going to cost a little bit more money. But yeah. <laughs> he's I'll just let Jeff know and we'll work it out. But it's going to be worth it. And it's going to pop. And I know, I'm, I know. But that's why I brought you up the idea. Since it's the anniversary, it was probably the 25 year of the album. I can't remember, 2025. But I convinced them to get Be Real to come out for that one. And mm. that one right there, even rest in peace to Homer Wreck, um, and a few other people told me, like, bro, yeah, that was the fucking best peace, Psycho right? Realm show, like, fucking ever, man. Like, that is, that is, one. Is that the one where also Everlast came? Um, no? I don't think okay, so. Okay, that was a. That, a that might have been Psycho the Mile, one of the Psycho oh, Miles, okay. Psycho the Miles. Um, but I remember getting Be Real to come out and that's uh, fucking bad. And uh, man, like to me, that that's psycho realm yeah. and it's and it's complete. Oh, you know, obviously, with the, uh, Duke, you know, yeah. you know, if I, would, I would wish he, you know, he. But but Cynic does his thing for him. Yeah, yeah. But that was like as complete as psycho realm as you can. I ever remember experience. seeing him when they first came out with when, when they were still with Be Real before Duke got shot. Like yeah, him performing oh, on stage. Man, I got I to I see him perform on stage. Like I, I, I still remember that show. That sticks out a lot to me. Like oh yeah, show. no, we yeah. we've seen uh, them perform. Uh, blown away. Uh, hey dog, yeah, but, hey dog, they get. You fucking. know what's a trippy show is the first time I see, ever seen them perform, was at the Observatory when it was called the Galaxy Theater before oh, the observatory so i was just a fan at that yeah, point yeah. yeah yeah and i remember running out to them being like what's up bro fucking i'm a fan and i'm a rapper bro. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> those, those, i was kicking it with jack and i was like yeah, it was all fucking thought i was cool shit. <laughs> <laughs> and then some fucking haters somewhere fucking blasted in the air or some shit and everybody, yeah, I, everybody uh, dispersed yeah i've shit. kicked it with jack and thought i was cool before too yeah. so it's all good drinking hey. jack with <laughs> jack. oh <laughs> man no jack. not not just jack gentleman jack hey. gentleman jack yeah. anytime and we book jack it has and to you, be gentlemen. And you know what? And it's, you know, obviously with the now that things are opening back up, but mm -hmm. man, I, I want to, I'm going to smoke one with Big Duke again, too. With Blaze okay. one, dog. Big Put Duke's a air. fucking homie, dog. Hell like, yeah, dog. He would always hit me, like, be prior to every show, like, what's up, Droops? I'm going to come through. He's Because he, he typed. He could still yeah. type. Yeah. Like, you know what I mean? Like, even though, and, and we've even talked. He could talk, too. Yeah. But, um, but he would always be messaging me like we'll, we'll be in touch and he'll be like yeah i'll post it i'll back it up blah blah like he's always been a super cool and shit yeah man. Hell yeah I, no. I got much love for duke and the Fuck whole the whole yeah. crew man like they're um really you know jack, jack's one of my fucking he's like out of all like artists that i fuck with like i consider him probably the closest to me yeah and like it's just crazy because i used to be a super fan and then next thing yeah. you know we're working together he fucking spun my wedding and shit. <laughs> oh, oh so no way. Oldies. Oh, so, oh, and he yeah, brought out he, his vinyls? He brought out his 45. I, I, got, to, yeah, I he, got to host a show where he spun his 45, bro. Yeah, the man. bar sessions here at the Visa. Yeah, that was, at, oh, that at was the bar. so epic. Yeah, we yeah. threw a show here okay. at the bar sessions uh, yeah. with, uh, shout out George Miller, George. the Vinyl Life, but yeah. put together a show and Jack and, and uh, Waxy spun some oh, music because they put out a project together. But, hey, yeah. man, that's dope. Epic shit. Hey, let, let's do this. This might be the first time I can get through a whole show without having to take a piss. Yeah, so, me too. Shit. So, <laughs> let, listen, rabbit fire around right now. I, I know Shay's got a couple too, but we were mentioned we talked Wu-Tang, but uh, we met, this one's common, but... Uh, 
Cuban links. Only built for Cuban Ooh. links or liquid swords. You oh. knew I was going to go that. What, you're going that? Oh, yeah. shit. Uh, I got to go Cuban links, man. I'm, uh, I, 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 my bad. Liquid swords? No, honestly, the It's hard for me, but I go hard. liquid swords. It, liquid swords is just like the yeah. production on it is yeah. probably way. I'm not going to say way better than Cuban links, but I just. I don't know the verse. Something the you verse, cut, yeah. Something on Cuban Links. Yeah. When I first heard that album, I was like, I probably, I think I probably heard Cuban Links album before I heard Liquid Swords, and I don't know if they came out. Which one came I out think first? Cuban Links came out first. That's probably why then. Yeah, but they so, were, so they were my cherry. But shit. it wasn't that much. <laughs> after. Yeah. I remember that because it was right after the, their first album. They started doing their so, each solo project. But when bit. I heard Liquid Swords. Yeah, I had a Cadillac back in the days and shit, and that oh. shit had bumps and shit. Oh, I when the MCs you, came you, you to put, bring out the name. You, if you hey, put dog. Liquid Swords on bumps, <laughs> that shit's gonna bump way harder than Cuban oh. Links. My that's, bad. That's, oh, but, that was mine. Hey, that's a, that's one of my <laughs> probably top five albums ever. Is Li- Liquid Swords. Yeah, too. I would say those two are are definitely in my tops. Yeah, um, yeah. And I, I, I don't know. Yeah, you go got ahead. one. Go ahead. Go ahead. <laughs> uh, well, just um, I was gonna say something like in the entertainment genre. Like, what, what are you more into? Like movies or or like series like would you rather watch like a full like series like on it or, or you don't really have time for you'd rather just watch like a movie a good movie now i don't really have time but when i do uh, it, it's probably a series really? yeah, for some reason good. i don't know i get i get it gets more stuck because I, I think because the way they they plot it the way they draw it out uh, yeah and then after that first episode you're like oh what the fuck and shit and you want to watch the one i'm waiting for what's that one called was it ozark what was that one ozark yeah yeah they're, dude, they're supposed I'm to come out the next for, season i'm I heard still waiting it, yeah. for that season that was one of the ones because i don't get a chance sometimes i'm always busy and then yeah. you know with, with, i got a young one too so yeah, yeah. It, it's i know with the young ones yeah, it's impossible yeah, it's hard sometimes i stopped we've stopped to get into that but we don't um, watch movies or nothing. But that's one of the ones that i actually got into like series we watch me and my lady watch every single one and then I was like, damn. And then they left us hanging. And then COVID happened. And then, like, I'm still waiting. What's going to happen? I don't uh, know what's going to happen after. I, I can't think of a lot of them. But I would think, like, off the top of my head, it would be, like, fucking Sons of Anarchy. Oh, yeah. Um, fucking, oh, I'm on the Mayans um, now. I uh, do watch yeah, the Mayans. Mayans but but um, Narcos and shit. Oh, yeah. And then, um, uh, fuck. I don't know. Uh, maybe Stranger Things and shit. That's weird. Oh, yeah. No, I that's but, pretty good. I haven't watched that one. He, uh, that shit's yeah, fucking... I, I got sucked me in. It sucked in my wife, too. So that was the only one that we could, like... It, it's on that vibe like the uh, Goonies were because it's set, like, in the 80s and that yeah. era. And it's about, you know, these youngsters. See, and Nauticals and, uh, is probably still my favorite, and, and though. that's one of yeah. his favorite movies, yeah. the Goonies. The Goonies? Oh, I fuck, yeah, I fuck with the Goonies. But uh, Nauticals is my shit. You know what's one of my favorite ones from back in the day? Is still, like, it's underrated. Nobody talks about it. Do you remember Stand By Me? Yeah. Okay. I thought that was a dope no, movie. That's right? not yeah. a movie, movie, movie. Yeah, the movie okay. Stand By Me. Um, yeah, I just thought that was dope, and it never really, I don't know, people don't talk about it as much. Yeah. Hey, I got another one. Okay. All right. Chino XL or Cannabis? Ooh. Fuck. These are just random stuff we throw together. But Can uh, I just say no comment or what? Uh, yeah. <laughs> that's a tough one. That's that. Honestly, that are you saying because you know both of them? You're like, oh, I don't want no, to say. I didn't say nah, <laughs> not even. Not nah, Gino Excel is just a fucking beast and shit. Yeah. You know, he's he's probably like one of the most controversial. Here, like, he'll here's why I lean to Chino Excel. Uh, yeah. In this one, because I'll answer to some of these, but yeah. um, is because like I first bought the shit. His very first uh, here to save you all, I believe it was called. Oh uh, fuck yeah! Um, on cassette, it came out because they didn't have CDs when that came out. I think, or they were barely coming out with. I don't remember, but I bought it, and then, like, I was one of the cats. I've talked about this before on the podcast, but in the area where we lived, they would come to me like to hear new hip hop. Oh, okay. So that was one of the ones I bought, and then everybody started getting it. Fuck yeah, well, they liked it because he yeah. was talking that shit. Yeah. But it was rap, like real hip hop. Nah, so. yeah. Like, and then like you know, I've interviewed him before, so you know. No, nah, and he has some sick even He's features dope. and shit. Like the well, the wake up show. Oh fucking, yeah. Um, I, I don't know, like, I'll, I'll probably lean towards Chino Excel. Cannabis. That's where we used to hear him the most back in the day, is well, the on the Wake, wake, up, wake show. up Show. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Like, his freestyle is just fucking ridiculous. Yeah. And his, oh, his yeah. live performance is ridiculous. Oh, yeah. I've only seen Cannabis probably, like, two, maybe three times. Uh, but, you know what? Fuck it. Let's make it fucking let's, uh, off the record or 
on the record. It will Don't be. Don't steal it. my idea, motherfuckers. But, yeah. <laughs> but Chino, let's do a Chino XL and Cannabis show. Yeah, shit. see? Okay. <laughs> there it is. See You'll get we'll the best we... of both worlds and yes. shit. And, we'll... and, like, and like, do it like that. If yeah. People, yeah, don't I'm be I'm talking stealing. about actual concert and shit. We said I'm, it here, I'm, so don't be yeah, biting. Don't be biting stupid. this shit, motherfuckers. Right. <laughs> <laughs> uh, people be biting hard, dog. Oh, trust All right. me. Hey, okay. Uh, let me ask you this then. Uh, your most go to music that's not hip hop. That's not hip hop. Yeah, your most go to that you find your, you bump the most, and mine I'll tell you just while you think about that. Mine, yeah. as I've said it before though, it's classic rock. So okay, now like me personally, I I grew up off of like fucking my my dad bumping fucking like r- rancheras like fucking, yeah. you know or or like oldies and shit like that. Yeah, that's um, see, you, oldies you know, are right after for me. Yeah, so like I I can't really say which one. Probably more. Fuck, I don't even know, man. <laughs> like, there was a point in time, shit, where I was like, I was like, just to mellow out, I used to just fucking listen to classical music, and oh. I didn't even, I didn't even know who the fuck, yeah, the, who the gonna, fuck yeah, the yeah. singer was or what. Yeah, who, but who I would just fucking good. listen to that shit just to fucking like chill Shay's, out. Like, Shay's go-to out. is uh, uh, Donnie and Marie Osmond. Like, oh, that's uh-huh. what, what, Partridge what, Family. Yeah, no. okay. <laughs> no, I'm not no, that old. No. <laughs> no. What about you, Shay? What do you? Oh well, for, for sure, classic rock too. But um, you know, sometimes I'll, I'll listen to like a little, little bit of oldies, and yeah. and recently I actually listen to more house music because of my girl. Mm. So I was never I'm really into it, but some of I it's not li- bad. You know, I when was you're into in house certain, music at yeah, a certain yeah. time back in the party scene back when I was like sixteen. Yeah, it's a, when you're in a certain when you have a certain buzz, it it, it sounds pretty good actually. Yeah, <laughs> so <I'm> like, yeah. <laughs> hey, um, man, bro, this is like. It's been one of those conversations that I've been wanting to have. Like I told you, man, we just have some cool conversations here. Yeah. I wanted to thank you for coming through, man, and it's good to see you. I know for, for me, speaking personally as a hip-hop head, too, mm-hmm. it's good that you're back and doing shows because these are the shows people been missing this shit. Uh, dog. Like, trust me. So yeah. uh, 2MEX, uh, Elemento, um, AWOL 1, July um, 10th. that's going to be the Saturday after this uh episode drops yep right so after. make sure you get your tickets if there's any left and then uh, we got the alcoholics july 30th that i'm hosting what else you got yep. man? and then the july 16th with sugar free yeah uh, pee, pee, which pee. i fucking love sugar casey free veggies shows. Told yeah casey about veggies if i told and, you uh, a flea C-Pla. could pull a tree you take a uh, chain <laughs> and hook his little ass up <laughs> <laughs> all right i had to say that no uh, yeah casey veggies and t-fly fucking uh-huh. you know we want we, we really what we want to do like we want to bring it back to like how observatory used to be or how like we used to book shows which is like a little bit of everything you know mm-hmm. so something for the new people for the yeah. new kids or or newer generation i should say uh something for the west coast gangster crowds that love that fucking yeah. old school shit something for the underground raw hip-hop heads um and then uh and then just something else special like we're dibbling and dabbling within like trying to do oldies or some shit or funk or hey, some the, shows or and shit you know like what is want to bring something for everybody uh, and you know what yeah. else is that's the 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 dopest the beautiful thing to me like i mentioned is when you could also bridge the gap and you see maybe at the younger artists there might be some older people in the crowd or or yeah. vice versa you might see some youngsters in the crowd at a at an OG's show, like, yep, yep. and that's oh, you'd a be beautiful, surprised. It's a beautiful remember, thing, We just had man. a guest, who was it, the other, I forgot the guest, like, I'm drawing a blink right now, but he, he just said that, he Marijuana said, uh, the when memory. you think about hip-hop is the first genre that two generations, father, son, whatever, mother, yeah, like, daughter, listen, can they both listen to hip-hop, like, so right yeah. now, our generation, and, and you know, the, the age of, like, you know, the, the ones that are, you know, our next generation, they're listening to hip-hop. We listen to hip-hop still. Yeah, So yeah. it's really the first genre that's it's been. It's just that, different you know. generations of hip-hop. Yeah, it's shit, different types right. of hip-hop, but it's still, you know, yeah, it's still hip-hop. Yeah, that, that, that's how I want to. Hey, I want to end the show, let them know where they can uh, follow you and all that stuff one more time, man, yeah. if we didn't say it. Uh, yeah, for, for whatever reason, if you're trying to fucking cross-promo network or fucking artists wanting to get or on. Or get booked. Yeah, yeah or get booked. Um, uh, Out the House is a page on Instagram. That's the most active one that we're on. Uh, probably won't get at you all the time. and it gets Especially now it's going to get busier, but... Oh, yeah. Be patient. He's Be learned patient. how to take his vacations and his rest. So, <laughs> you know. But it's out the house, out D A house, out the house. Um, and then you can hit me on my email. It's DJ dot droops at gmail dot com. DJ period droops is D R double O P S at gmail dot com. And I don't like doing this shit. I'm probably going to regret doing this shit, but I don't give a fuck right now. I'm, I'm starting to stay busy. We're in overdrive mode. Uh, we're doing a lot more shows within us 
where instead of relying on corporate companies uh, we'll probably still be working with a lot of these corporate companies later down the road but uh, you can hit me in my direct 714 area code 623-0130 if I don't answer don't blow me up over and over and over again and just drop me a text message or drop a voice patient. <laughs> yeah be patient I'll get back to you eventually and hey don't be sending him dick pics nobody, <laughs> nobody wants to see that shit <laughs> yes, nah, I don't want to be seeing that shit. Wifey's gonna be like, "What the fucking fuck? weirdos?" <laughs> hey, no, but hey, I, I just wanted to say, dog, we appreciate you coming through, man. We work sure. together a lot. Well, I mean, we've, you know, uh, we've supported each other's uh, platforms for but, sure. But um, we're working together again, and I, I thank you for that. But besides that, we just had to have a conversation here on the show. Yeah, um, for those that might not be familiar with your work, they're gonna be familiar now. So yeah, they'll, they'll definitely like like how you mentioned, you know, you had the other show. This is a little bit more in depth and big up the B side show. Down. Yeah, yeah. Like man, you guys, you we're guys still here. I, I fucking appreciate you guys. We still do being our around. thing. Uh, yeah. You know, appreciate you guys inviting me. Uh, you'll we'll be see, you'll be seeing us at the shows for sure. Oh yeah, yeah. no doubt. Oh yeah, we'll be out there in full effect, and we'll be promoting this. You'll see it all on our stories uh, on our page and all that. Thank yeah. you, Droops, for coming through. Droops out the house production. This has been another episode of the Rabbit Season Podcast. Thank you guys for tuning in. We appreciate you. Peace. Peace. Hell yeah. <laughs>